Welcome to Cancelled. Cancelled is recorded and produced by the producer extraordinaire Mike Moody at the beautiful Permanent Record Studios here in Austin, Texas. I'm here with Pat Dean. Pat Dean, how's it going? Good. It is It is a beautiful studio. It looks different every time I come here. I don't know what's... <laughs> They're always doing work, man. Improvements, I think. Oh, you're supposed to improve in life. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've been wrong. I've been wrong my whole <laughs> and, life, I guess. Well, I mean, you've got a tattoo of a chair. That yeah, was that's pretty a, cool. That's an improvement <laughs> on the, the original Pat Dean model. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you can tell it's an original because it's covered in ketchup. It's just like, oh, God, <laughs> we can't sell this. <laughs> uh, Pat Dean, you yes. might, I think, first repeat guest. Oh, hell yeah. Like to do a full series. I think you're the first person to do a second full series. Nice. Uh, and we are doing Night Stalker. Yes. 2005. Now, this is a remake of Kolchek the Night Stalker, which we did, the 70s Darren McGavin show. Yep, classic. Um, I believe that's his name, Darren McGavin, right? Darren something? Darren something. Yeah, I'm pretty sure about that. Here's the thing. I think we both genuinely enjoyed mm-hmm. the original Kolchak the Night Stalker. How did you feel about the Night Stalker? Where I, I'm assuming you've only watched two episodes like me. Yeah, I watched the first two episodes. Um, man, so here's the deal. I, the, what I really enjoyed about the first one, and I believe you had the same feeling about it, is that I loved the 70s vibe. Sure. I loved it, how of its time it was. And I, f- like, I feel like this one, like, it was made in 2005. Mm. It could be, it could have been made two years ago. It could have been made 20 years ago. There was no, like, it just seemed like a, ti- like, not, I mean, timeless in a bad way. Yeah, and also, well, it, it seemed nondescript, I yeah. think is the best way to describe it. But also, like, Yes, you couldn't make a 70s sh- – you couldn't make it this show as 70s as it was, right? No. But you could have captured the sort of fun sure. and the camp and the like – I don't know. There was like a – there was like, – all right. So let's, if, you ha- if you didn't watch the first one, the original is about Carl Kolchak. I think his name was Carl. Carl, yeah. one as well. Uh, he was a reporter. It Based on a TV movie that became a series, uh, he stumbles – he's investigating some murders. Turns out they're vampires. And he stumbles into the sort of world of the occult and the macabre. And yeah. every week he finds a new story and there's a mummy or a evil computer or whatever. Yeah. Is, right? Super fun. They have changed it now where he, our hero is this like brooding, yeah. tortured Koljak. He's also a reporter, but it turns out his wife is mur- was murdered. And he's tr- like, but murdered by maybe a monster. We don't know. And he's trying to find out what happened to his wife. So, like, the, I think the fun in the initial one was like, oh, he's just this guy. He's kind of da- like kind of put upon. I think he might live in his car. He's kind of hard to tell. Upon. Yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Put he's upon like, like the guy just subsided on like coffee and like. That's it. Like, you never saw him eat. He was just constantly one of those dudes who yeah. was just, just pounding coffee, never seemed to eat anything. And you're like, oh, cool, this seemed guy. annoyed to ha- – like, wasn't as sca- – wasn't, like, scared or terrifying no. as much as he was annoyed by having to constantly <laughs> deal with monsters, right? Yeah, it would be annoying. <laughs> just put up with that and Tony Vincenzo, his boss. Yeah, dude. And all this fun kind of whatever. Now it's – He's got a partner. Kolchak doesn't have a goddamn partner. No. He's Kolchak. Come on. He drives around. He talks to a tape recorder. Even that they fucked up in these in the in the new one. By the way, the voiceovers. The, yeah. Okay, so the pilot starts and he said it, it starts with the line, "I drive at night. The police radio is my compass." And I went, "Ugh, shut up, dude." I thought it was a commercial. <laughs> I, was, I was watching it on, on, on ABC or whatever, and like they had they had a couple commercials. So I'm like, ah, oh, but um, but um, and I thought it was a commercial for like a Lexus or something because I was like, yeah, <laughs> like those weird Matthew McConaughey yeah, commercials. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, nope, just a show. And then he literally says the line. Okay, just remember the name of the show is Night Stalker. He says the line in that voiceover. I stalk the night. <laughs> <laughs> come on, dude. A little. A little on the nose, my man? Yeah, come bit. on, man. Um, <laughs> I'm a mad man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, right. He's like, yeah, what if he literally was just, <laughs> if John Hamm was like, I work in advertising, some call us ad men, <laughs> but I am a little upset. You might say I'm a, yeah, you just said I that. I wish every show did that. He has really explained <laughs> the titular line. My name's Seinfeld. <laughs> we know. Yeah, we know. We know. You don't have to, yeah. And you're friends since eighth grade. <laughs> yeah, I know who you are. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, the thing about it is that, yeah, he, he definitely takes it from a guy who is just sort of generally annoyed. And the, you're right. He does turn him into kind of like this brooding guy. And it's like, what was so cool about Kolchak, the Night Stalker, is that, you felt like you kind of knew this guy a little yeah, bit, yeah, yeah. but like whenever, like, like I've never met a, 
a, whenever you see these things where it's like, I'm a brooding anti-hero. I've never met a brooding anti-hero. <laughs> no. Like, who has ever, this guy's a real. You know I would I mean? also like to add, he is a terrible hero as he barely accomplishes anything. Yeah. The second episode, he almost loses. He really, all right, we'll get to the second episode yeah. in a minute because that one really annoyed me. Let's talk about the first episode. This is the pilot. Yeah. I mean, as far as as a pilot goes, it got across what this show is going to be, which is a low-rent X-Files. Yeah, I mean, it builds the universe pretty well. It's fine. So we have a low-rent X-Files. He's the... He's Fox Mulder. He's in. He's uh, has to investigate the supernatural. He's paired up with Gabrielle Union. Uh, her name is Perry on the show. Also, everyone's on this show's name is weird. It's so Carl weird. Kolchak is fine. Her name is Perry P E R P E R R I. And then the male photographer's name is Jane. <laughs> but I watched <laughs> it with that. subtitles on, and his name is J A I N. That's no one's name. What the hell? That's like a, <laughs> yeah. that's like a Roman god. I think. Is it? Yeah, I think so, or something. That's fucking weird. I didn't yeah. catch that. Um, so, we <laughs> the show opens, and uh, Roy from the office is getting ready to go to work, yeah. and uh, his uh, he leaves in the middle of the night. He clearly works the night shift. She's gonna go, his wife's gonna go to bed. There's a crazy noise. She grabs a knife, which I respect. Yeah, she goes to investigate the noise. Her front door has been like kicked open. Lamp is smashed. The place is fucking like wild trashed. So she walks outside and looks around for a minute, which I was like, no, whoever, that's somebody yeah. coming in. That is an inward. You think that, yeah, that's what they do when they leave? Yeah, <laughs> like, <what? laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I broke in. I stole nothing, I but. Smashed I'm the gonna, lamp, yeah. and I tiptoed away. Uh, she is attacked and dragged off into the night. That's the last thing we see of her. Yeah, what's weird about that is that, so at first, I didn't, like, I didn't realize it was a monster until, like, she started getting dragged away. Then I was like, oh, okay. So at first, because. When Roy from the office leaves, mm. uh, I'm assuming to get uh, pepper sprayed by Dwight at his job, when he <laughs> drove away, <clears throat> you kind of see it from the point of view of the monster. Like, he's, like, hiding somewhere. And it looked like it was a, a human standing up. So I was like, oh, this isn't going to be a supernatural thing. Oh, that's kind of a bummer. So right, when, it, when it was a supernatural thing, I was like, okay, cool. It's, it's true to the spirit. I, 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 that, yeah. yeah, I thought it was going to be, like a, like, a weird, gritty, true crime thing. No, yeah, I, that would make me very angry. The other thing that was kind of odd about it is that, like, so the, the, thing, shat, like, the, the thing shattered, the, like, light or whatever, and she goes outside, looks around for a second, and then just kind of calmly goes back inside, and it's like, all right, well, whatever. That was yeah, kind of strange. That like, was no, odd. someone clearly was inside your someone, home. Someone broke it through your house. Your door's been kicked off its fucking hinges. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, yeah, 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 yeah. Not, lamps don't fall over for no reason. Yeah, it's insane. Yeah. Her idea to just walk back inside, and then she, like, steps on some glass. She's like, oh, my foot. And that's yeah. she's like, just goes back into the kitchen. Um, she eventually gets taken away. We come back. It's a crime scene. Uh, Gabrielle Union shows up. She's from the Beacon. She's got yeah. Jane, the photographer, with her. And she's told, oh, there's somebody already here from the Beacon. And it's Kolchak. She Hell doesn't yeah. know him. They've never met. It's his first day on the job. He's a dick. Such a dick. Right away. Such a dick. <laughs> How did this guy ever get married? He's so <laughs> rude to everyone. He's a fucking real asshole. He's just kind of a jerk. <laughs> he, well, maybe he's a jerk post-wife being murdered. We oh, don't, yeah, yeah. By the way, we don't know his wife has been murdered yet. That comes up later. But he literally, he shows, she's like, hey, uh, we're from the Beacon. Who are you? And he's like, oh, you can leave. And you're like, no, we uh, we were assigned this story. Like, he has we're here. No to ID. Out. He's like, I already got the job. Yeah, he has no ID. She doesn't know him. And like, I see. Here's what was fun in the original Kolchak. He was always lying. <laughs> he was always like constantly, great, like l- pretending to be an insurance investigator or whatever to sneak in and get the story. So I thought that's what Kolchak was doing. Like, he doesn't actually work for the Beacon. Yeah, I thought that too. The story. No, he actually does work for the Beacon. He just didn't go to work like his boss is like you know most people show up get a desk meet their co-workers and he's like nah i figured i'd do it this other way yeah I, it's it's weird the uh the whole thing of like oh i'm the good guy but i'm also a jerk like that can be done pretty well you know but like i feel like i don't know I've, he I, is I, not likable no his problem yeah he's not, and he's He's not likable, but he's not unlikable enough to be interesting. He's just like this dude. He's just like a mook. He's just like he's not particularly smart. No. Uh, he also has – so there's a bunch of – all right. One, when we meet Tony Vincenzo, I have a note here that says I'd like him to be fatter. Yeah. Uh, I liked fat, uh, always eating a sandwich editor from the last one. This it's guy's, the best. Yeah, yeah, this guy's some trim son of a bitch. Probably that gym membership. Yeah. That's not what Vincenzo <laughs> no, does. No, certainly not. 
Uh, but they do call him Tony Vincenzo. By the way, interesting fact I learned about this. So this is based only on the TV movies because uh, APC only had the rights to the TV movies. Universal oh. owns the series. So it's like we've got these couple of character names oh. that showed up in the, t- in the movie, and then we kind of have to go from there. Okay, yeah, because it started off as a movie, and it's called – okay, that makes sense because yeah, it's called Night, Night Stalker, Stalker originally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it, oh. Exactly. Interest- I didn't know that. I didn't know that either. I also I, didn't notice um, – Producer extraordinaire Mike Moody gave me notes. Oh, okay, hell yeah. yeah. I didn't notice until – the second episode that was Vincenzo. Yeah, like, yeah. I, I well, they say just... Tony the first time, and oh, then they, they do refer okay, to him later. Yeah, that's probably why. Um, <laughs> or I'm just an idiot. No, no, you're fine. I don't think they call him that so much. Um, so they go back. So we've got Gabriel Union and him kind of at heads, right? They're yeah. kind of button heads. And I'm like, okay, that might be an interesting thing if he's if if they're like competing uh, reporters, yeah, right, and they're not partners. They're immediately partners. They, 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 they just should immediately. And they kind of become friendly, too, immediately. A there's little too no, quick. There's no tension. <laughs> <For> <laughs> ticket, well, there's, well, here's what's so weird. There's immediate tension because she starts Googling him. Yeah. Uh, and she finds out that he was a murder suspect. Yeah. Because there's a, a link on Google that just says FBI murder investigation, Carl Kolchek. And when she clicks it, it's a 404 <laughs> page not found. But when that comes up, the music goes like, boom, boom. <laughs> like that's their dramatic reveal. Not that he was suspected in a murder, but that the internet's not working. Yeah. Like that was the weird <laughs> trauma moment. It's such a weird yeah. Place. It's like it's, it's like he had nothing to do with that. It just happened to be. But yeah. So what what I'll say about this is that when when what I thought was very cool about this episode is that so she she does some homework because she's like, what is this guy's deal? <laughs> yeah. uh, and like I guess talks to an old boss of his or something uh, or no well, an FBI, FBI yeah, 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 FBI agent. Yeah. And um, he's like, oh yeah, he's a murderer. He killed his wife. Right. And so I was like, man, that would be. I'm like, that's kind of cool. And I kind of thought it would be like a season long arc of like her yeah. kind of in the background Back, being like Did? investigating him in the, un, behind the scenes. Yeah. yeah, yeah but yeah, it's yeah, resolved yeah, yeah. in five minutes. Immediately resolved. Imme- there's a, no tension whatsoever. <laughs> well, she's, a, she's tense for a moment. And then also weird. Here's uh, so he meets. So she goes out, she calls this guy. And at first I, th- she calls a guy and he's like FBI. He has like a dumb fake name. And I can't yeah. remember. And, uh, I thought he, she was calling, Kolchak pretending. I think I thought for a second that Kolchak was pretending to be an FBI agent, like he had all these oh. fake characters set up around the country. Obviously, not the case. It is a real FBI agent. Oh, she goes cool. to meet him in the desert, and he's like, "This is where Kolchak killed his wife." Now that's not his story. And we get this flashback of him. They're driving. He like swerves to avoid an oncoming car, and while they're sitting there, something smashes through the window and then steals his wife, drags her away. He wakes up. He's unconscious. He's covered in blood. For some reason. <laughs> There's a Gumby, and I don't even know if it's an air freshener, but it's hanging, a little picture, a little statue of Gumby that is hanging from the rearview mirror. Yeah. When we first see it, we see it's top to bottom, the whole, the whole figure. And they call attention to it. They call attention to it because when, after the monster has reached through the windshield, he apparently took half of the Gumby statue with him because it's missing the bottom half. Like, he reached through so fast and it cut through the Gumby <laughs> statue. It's such a weird point of, like, specificity to the point where he is now driving around with the half the Gumby yeah. in his new car. And it's covered in blood. I would also, cleaned it. He never cleaned it. I would also like to add his car is too nice. Yeah. He is driving around in, like, a – this would shows in 2005 – like a 2005 Dodge Charger. It's like a nice yeah. car. And no. He, his house is ridiculous. They're both of their apartments are way too nice. Yeah, they're just like shitty crime reporters in what city? Not even like a real. It's not Las Vegas because he was in Las Vegas. I believe and moved. So now it's just like I looked it up because I because I remember they talked about Vegas, which that was kind of a nice nod. Not the original. The, the original yeah. I believe they're in L. A. Okay, is I it think. L.A.? All right, I'll, I'll, I guess. Something like that, yeah. Uh, but still, you don't get to afford that house on, like, a beat reporter's yeah, what, salary. What's your deal? Also. Who did you kill to get this house his, from? His wife, I oh, think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. Insurance money. So she meets the FBI agent. She goes back to – and she. so the FBI agent tells her the story. The story is somewhat similar to the stor- the current story of this woman who's been dragged away from her house and killed. So they arrest Kolchak? That was so weird. I don't – that is not a – it's not an arrestable offense I would, to have a murder but that you have not – Like they didn't have enough evidence. He's never been arrested or convicted of this crime. Um, 
he's just out do, living his life. Somebody else gets murdered a whole other state yeah. away, and now he has to go to jail for it, that? that? That didn't make a lot of sense. Well, like, nothing makes a lot of sense. You know what makes the least sense? The what? chemical lojack. We'll get back to it. Um, <laughs> it made me so mad. But we'll get back to it in a minute. Um, so, yeah, he gets he, – he goes to jail because she's called – and now – we get a shot of them waiting outside, like he's gonna clearly going to be getting released, like a bail or whatever. Yeah. And she's talking to uh, – Gabriel Union is talking to Tony Vincenzo, and he tells – she's like, uh, did you know he was a, a murderer or whatever? And he's like, uh, uh, what's he say? Like, Suspected murderer. He says it <laughs> like that. <laughs> it's such a weird yeah. – um. Arrested, but not charged. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Uh, and he tells us this story of how he met Kolchak. And Kolchak, he's like, I was working the, the – Vincenzo says I was working the whatever desk at the Las Vegas fucking Herald. Yeah. And this kid walks in and says, I've got proof that the L.A. government, the local government's in bed with corruption, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, oh, the fucking whatever case. And he's like, yeah, uh, that kid who walked in was Kolchak. He lived this story for two Years, 24 hours a day, brought in 32 indictments, all this stuff. And the day when the main guy, the big, the big moment, the main guy's getting arrested, Kolchak didn't show up. And she's like, what do you mean? He's like, because his wife was sick and he yeah. stayed home to be with her. He blew off the biggest day of his career to stay and be with his wife. So did, some, did he lose it after his wife died? Yes. Did he murder his wife? Absolutely not. And then that's it. That's the whole wrap up of that murder, except, okay. So proves nothing. By the proves way. nothing. Proves absolutely nothing. Uh, <laughs> like, it just what? proves that you think you know a guy. That's literally all it proves. <laughs> <laughs> now we have this moment where she drives him home, right? Because he's been arrested in his car. So Gabriel Union drives him home <laughs> to get to his house, and I think we're supposed to be meant to believe that the FBI has searched his house. Uh, yeah. But what they have done is vandalize it. They just they, destroyed everything. They destroyed. There's a lamp that's broken in half. Did you think he hid something inside the <laughs> lamp <laughs> yeah, murder that you had it. to break? It's insane. Like, they just destroyed this house. The other thing I thought was funny about that scene is that, like, so she's, like, called the FBI on this guy. Yeah. And he was clearly, like, locked up for a few hours, whatever, whatever. And then she had to give him a ride home. That must have been the most Very awkward. awkward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're listening to no music. They're driving in dead silence. It's just like, the, like, and he doesn't seem upset at all. He's just sort of like, all right, yeah, whatever. Yeah. No, yeah. She, he's over. He's like, I need a beer. You need a beer? Literally what happens when they get to the house. Now, here's my favorite part. She's walking around the apartment. She stumbles into his, uh, his like office, so to speak. Yeah. And there's all this weird shit. It's not weird shit. It's just like files and then pictures of like, oh, maybe a murder here or whatever. Yeah. Your classic, like, there's a red string tying a two points of interest. Yeah, together, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And he breaks down basically the story of the show. Tells her about the wife's murder and how he's like, look, he's like, she, she's looking at the picture of this dead woman, and he's like, that's my wife. She says, well, why do you keep this picture? She goes, look at his, look at her left wrist, and she has this weird kind of scar. On or mark yeah. of sorts on her left wrist, and she goes. He says she didn't have that before the attack, before she was killed. And he, she's like, and he starts to tell her about all these other stories. Uh, there's one of he's like a man kills himself, commits suicide, and the suicide note confesses to three murders, every detail exactly right, except the murders happen after he dies. Yeah. And I was like, that's an interesting idea for a, a TV Very show. Very interesting. Um, there's another one of like a family who complains about what they think is a ghost and they don't, the police don't take them seriously until they find them all hanging in the attic. And I was like, oh, okay. Another that's interesting that's thing. A woman uh, has dreams that she's going to burn to death and she's terrified so she locks herself in her house and the next morning she wakes up, she's a pile, well, she doesn't wake up. The next morning they find her, she's a pile of ash. She had burnt at 2,500 degrees, the floor not even scorched underneath her. I'm like, all oh, these are great episodes. These are so interesting that they clearly couldn't figure out how to write episodes for <laughs> there was just like a bunch of good ideas that, that was were just like a werewolf <laughs> yeah, 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 fuck yeah, it yeah, just yeah, a yeah. giant wolf also is it a werewolf can we explain that nothing is explained no, in this episode it's just like a it didn't make any sense so meanwhile he's basically go he's poking around uh while this is happening the woman who's been dragged off her husband's been uh, uh, arrested for the murder essentially because she her body is found by t- a st- the two guys who are like motocrossing in the desert. It's very like uh, coincidental. Yeah. There's, a, there's a lot of coincidence in these episodes. So he's been charged for murder. Her, that, the dead woman's family has come to town. And now 
there at a hotel, whatever this monster is shows up again, attacks the wife of or the like sister in law of this woman who's been killed, yeah, and steals her steals their child, takes their child away, and they think, oh. Child's dead too, but they so Colchick's looking around. He finds some tracks. There's tracks in the sand or whatever. And then Jane has taken the picture. Well, Jane finds the tracks. He asks about an animal uh, when he confronts them at the morgue, like an asshole. The, <laughs> these guys have to go like identify the, the woman's body at the <laughs> morgue, and he just starts talking to their child in yeah. the hospital in the middle of the fucking night. Yeah, real dick. Just some guy talking to a little kid in a yeah. morgue. Yes. <laughs> Nothing weird about that. Just it's just where I hang out. Uh, One thing that I thought was kind of weird. Or just kind of odd, I guess, is that like so when Gabriel Union goes into the uh, his like room where he's like investigating his wife's murder, and there's all these like kind of disturbing pictures of like her body and stuff, and then in the background they're playing like creepy music, and then you hear like a child like laughing for some reason, and you're like, "What the hell? Where did that come from?" I didn't hear. You that. notice that? I didn't miss that entirely. I'm, I'm I don't. I, I wouldn't be shocked if they just added that in because they thought it sounded cre- creepy. Yeah, honestly, that's probably what it yeah, was. Yeah, and it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. They people do that sometimes, and it's like I I don't know I've I'm not like a tough guy, but I've I've never found children to be scary like those movies where it's like Tiny, a creepy I'll kid. Kick the shit out of you! You're, you're like forty pounds, dude. I'm gonna punch you in the face. Yeah, and I might kill you. Yeah, I'm gonna like, kill you with one punch with my bare baby. hands. So, yeah, so yeah, it's yeah, like yeah, yeah. whenever it's a movie where it's like oh, I can it's a, pick you up and throw you. I can literally throw you across yeah. the room. Like I'm not afraid of you. Yeah, yeah, dude, yeah it's yeah. like oh, it's a creepy kid. It's like oh, fucking. Unless he's like purely supernatural, yeah, I don't give a shit. Who gives a shit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't. know. I just thought that was. I just, I'm just sick. That's one of the tropes in horror. I'm just kind of fucking sick of. Yeah. Just creepy kids. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> so Kolchak asks about a mon- about animals, and Jane, the photographer, overhears that. So he starts looking at the pictures of the crime scene he's taken, and he finds these tracks. They just look like dog tracks. They're not interesting in any way. They're not like they don't make a thing of being like they're so far <laughs> apart that it would have to be a its stride would be so big it has to be monstrously big. <laughs> There's nothing like that. It's just some fucking dog track. And then he fi- and then they take a he's like. Uh, and he goes, and then I found this, and it's a picture of an ambulance. He's like, no, behind the ambulance. And there's what looks like a blurry picture of a dog. It's not a good picture. It's like no. blurry. And he's like, what is that thing? Yeah, he's freaking I'm out. Like, a dog. It's just blurry because you're not good at photography. You're, like, out, you're outdoors. Yeah. <laughs> there's going to be animals. It's not scary at all. And then then I have like, so they uh, they get a call that some animals have are outside of this girls school and they go oh well that must be the monsters because it's nearby or whatever yeah uh why that girl school is there at like night it did it, it was just weird <laughs> yeah it, who's it calling was the middle thing? of the night it's very weird <laughs> but there's little kids in there yeah, it was very weird. um so they show up and gabriel union's like wait a minute you called me in because somebody said they heard a dog like fuck this i'm leaving she goes to leave she gets attacked by one of the monsters yeah now here's a weird t- moment right they hit the fucking thing with a car right Jane takes some pictures of it. It gets turned into the police, the cops, or the, the the FBI, who's still there for some reason. Yeah, well, I'm not sure why, why they're involved. There, yeah. um, comes out with the coroner and is like, "It's a coyote," and it clearly was not a coyote. They hit the no. thing; we can see it. It kind of looks like a fucked up dog, but it doesn't look like particularly monstrous. No, it not really. Kind of like an ugly dog. And he also took photos of it. Like, yeah, he, right. he has evidence. He has evidence for sure. And uh, they're like, it's a coyote, a common coyote. And they're like, it didn't look like anything like a coyote I've ever seen. And they go, well, you fucked it up when you hit it with your car. Not the case, but whatever. And they go, oh, also, and we burned it. So there's no evidence. <laughs> yeah, why are you covering this up? It's such a weird thing. Why, why is the FBI involved in this cover-up? I don't. Un- that's what I don't understand. If it was something where, like, the government let loose an experiment, so we have to hide it, that's yeah. not it. It's just some weird animal that they also never explain <laughs> what the explain fuck what it, it is. is. Yeah, I, they they also like maybe the FBI will be like a recurring villain throughout the series, I'm maybe. But guessing, in the second episode, they just don't show up at all. He's not there. But they cast a guy who looks so much like the FBI agent that I thought it was him for oh, fifteen really? minutes oh, until funny. I realized, oh, he's a detective, not an FBI agent. But yeah, I was yeah. like, oh, I can't tell these white people apart at all. <laughs> um, so here's why. Here's where I got the most annoyed out of all of this. Yeah, they're there. They go back to the scene of the crime. He pulls out – he opens his trunk and he pulls out a, a what looks like a canister that like an, uh, an exterminator would have. Yeah. Right? It's like a metal canister with like a long wand. And you see an exterminator. They come. They spray poison, whatever, to get rid of bugs. 
And he just starts spraying this shit into the air. We don't know what it is. He doesn't address it at all. And nobody else goes, and uh, Gabrielle Union or the photographer don't go, hey, what the fuck are you doing? Like, nobody asks. He's just walking around spraying chemicals in the air. That's so weird. No one gives a shit. And then he's in his car and his phone beeps. And they're like, what is it? And he says, the stuff I was spraying in the air is like a chemical low jack. And I've picked up its signal. Yeah. No. What does that you, mean? Does it, it means nothing. It is fake. It's not only – look, It's a we're dealing in a world with the supernatural. I don't mind fake technology yeah. or whatever. Give me the bare minimum of explanation yeah. of how you have a chemical that sends a signal to your cell phone – when it attaches to a monster? I don't understand what the <laughs> – what is this thing supposed to be? I, it's a monster detector. It's, I literally wrote it down sucks. here, fuck you, TV shows. <laughs> I was so mad. Yeah. It's, it's like that is the laziest, most macguffin bullshit I've yeah, ever yeah, yeah. seen. Like you got to give me something to work with. Why does he have that chemical? Where did it come from? Why doesn't the government have that chemical? Because I've never seen it before. Like it's insane. It, I'm so angry. <laughs> anyway, so they get a signal. And they trace it back to this cave. And while they're outside the cave, they hear the little girl screaming inside. The girl's been taken because there was no blood. So he's been saying she's alive this whole time. There was no drag marks. There was no blood. They must have carried her off for some purpose. So they hear crying from inside the cave. And instead of, I don't know, calling the police or anybody with, like, search and rescue equipment or flashlights even, which they don't have. Yeah. <laughs> Literally they, anything. They have a magic chemical. But they don't have they don't flashlights. flashlights. They have three cattle prods that kind of glow a little bit, <laughs> but they have, have no cattle. fucking flashlights. <laughs> <sighs> they go into this fucking cave. There's some bats at one point that's like supposed to be a like a misdirect scare where you're like, oh, you think it's the monster, but it's just a bunch of bats. Uh, they trace. They hear this girl screaming. They follow her back to the screaming. He, like, goes through a little hole in the wall, and there's a big, giant chasm between where he is and the girl is. And she's like, he goes, I need you to jump to me. You need to go get a fucking rope or a ladder. That is yeah. a bottomless pit that you want this five-year-old yeah. to jump across because you can catch her noodly arm reporter guy. Yeah. You're not even, like, big. Like, I wouldn't trust you to catch a ch I was this big. <laughs> Everything about this was dumb. Yeah. It was just weird, and it's like, there's no explanation for why they stole, like, first of all... There is no explanation for, for anything. what they are, why they wanted the girl, where they came from... Why they're targeting that specific Why they're family. targeting that family. Because not only do they kill that woman, then they go after her brother's family, so it's yeah, like... Yeah, 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 And, like, yeah. they find them in a hotel. It's not like they find them where they live. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. why are you after these people, and... I don't know. And why? Uh, here's you, the uh, thing. In original Kolchak, they would have been like some Native American myth about the fucking plains wolves that steal children. Yeah. They would have come up with a backstory for these monsters, told us what they were, and come up with some way of beating them theoretically, right? Yeah. In this, they just exist, mostly win, right? <laughs> Except for they get the girl back and he runs one of them over with his car on the way out. Now – so there were, he, there, there were a few of them, right? So they get attacked by a couple more of them, right? There's yeah. the one that he hits in the parking lot that gets killed, and then they cre the police cremate in a cover-up. Then as they're leaving the cave, there are a few more. They come running yeah. after them because they've taken the girl. Uh, one of them grabs Jane's leg. I wrote down here. I was like, oh, I hope they eat the, rep the photographer. They didn't. <laughs> um, they hit him with a cattle prod. He falls off. They, they save Jane. As they're driving away, they're jumping at the cars and shit. One of them is, like, on the side of the car, so he smashes it against the wall. So that's another dead body of one of these fucking monsters, right? The next day, there's police everywhere. They're looking at the, the body. There's whatever at this cave. And then the, report, the story that he releases is, like, missing girl rescued from cave. Police looking for a kidnapper or whatever. And uh, she's like, why didn't you tell the real story? And he's like, people aren't ready for the real story. One day when I've gotten all the facts, then they'll listen. No, no, they won't listen. They'll never, they never will. listen to you. And you're not – this is the other thing with like – at least in the other cold check, he would like – He's like, I'm keeping these stories. I would always try to like get Tony to yeah. print them. Tony wouldn't print them, but I'm going to keep them for posterity because the world needs to know. Someday when I die, you'll find my tapes and the evidence will be there or whatever. This, he's doing it on purpose. He's like purposely not telling the story. 
That I found really annoying. Especially because there's like several people who survived these attacks who could back up his story. Yeah. Like the mom They're was attacked. They're mad witnesses. Yeah, the kid was kidnapped and brought to a weird cave for some reason. Like there's several people who could be like, oh, here's what happened. But like, no. I would also like to add that there is nothing supernatural about these creatures. Yeah. We don't know them to be other. All we know is that they are dog-like. They killed one woman. And they dragged the baby off into the woods. Yeah. Is that, is that, is there anything supernatural about any of that? I don't think so. I mean, I don't know. Unless they're like weird magic wolves, but right, they appear but they to don't be seem dogs. to be. They got, they, you can kill them with a car. There's no, you know what I'm saying? There's nothing particularly yeah. magical about well, is, is them. They're not made overly so large. They're not overly fast. They don't yeah. like disappear. They don't like the light. But if they live in caves, a lot of things that live in caves don't like the light. So like, I don't. It just didn't make – it was like for the first episode, I wanted something purely supernatural. Yeah. And I don't think we got that. Not really. You know what I just remembered? <clears throat> that scene where he's showing Perry like all the photographs and all like oh, – the, the, so the other thing there with the marks. Yeah. Did, I don't know if this is what you're going to say, but I do want to say this real fast. He tells the story that one guy killed himself and the murders happened after he died. These people uh, thought they were the ghosts. They hung themselves. It was spontaneous combustion. And he goes – she's like – and they all had the mark. And he's like, no. Then why are you? <laughs> what? The thing. He goes, a lot of them did, but not all of them. Then why are then you why? investigating this? It's so dumb. Also, why? Just say yes. Just say they all had the yeah, mark. why? Who gives a fuck? At least that's something. That's a story for him to be like, no, no, no they didn't actually. Not all of them, but you know. But then there's the reveal at the end of the episode. Because the episodes oh, yeah, begin yeah, yeah. and end with a shitty voiceover with also the words like some occasionally coming up on the screen. Yeah. So it'll say like darkness written on the screen when he says darkness. Uh, and the last frame of the episode is he reaches out at his computer and he's got the mark on his wrist. And I, I literally thought I wrote that. Oh, shit. He's got the mark. What the fuck does that mean? Because that that could be an interesting, like, oh, is he good? Is he bad? What are we doing here with this mark on him? Except that there is absolutely no way he can hide his wrist from people he works with for 10 episodes. He's just got a shirt like he... We see it immediately. Yeah. It, it's not hidden at all. No. Nope. Put a, he, like, if he had, like, if we had seen him to be wearing, like, a thick, shitty leather bracelet, and at the end of the episode, he takes it off, and we yeah. realize he's been covering up the, the mark, that's something. There's nothing. He's not hiding it at all. He's nope. just wearing a shirt. Just out in the open. God damn it. And none of the crime reporters notice. Nobody noticed. <laughs> Nobody notices shit. Uh, his best friend, Tony Vincenzo, has no idea. Nope. Uh, this ep- the next episode uh, is called The Five People You Meet in Hell. To yeah. give you an th- idea, there was a book that was popular, a very popular yeah. book called The Five People You Meet in Heaven. And it was like some schmaltzy fucking book. But it was a bestseller. And it's about some guy and he dies and he goes to heaven and he meets these five people that have like an impact on him in life. I think so that, this is a yeah. play. The title is a play on The Five People You Meet in Hell is the title of this episode. It's a play on that title. I think it's the guy who wrote Tuesdays with Maury. Probably. I what I will say is that was a popular book. A full two years before this TV show came out. <laughs> so, like, that is, the, that is the mentality of the people we're working with here. You want to make a topical reference, but you're making it to something that is two <laughs> years old at the yeah. point. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> this one I liked better than, than the other one. I like this one better as well. It was definitely more supernatural, yeah. mystical, or whatever. And also, I thought the opening was in fucking tense. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> There's a little kid. It's a Little League game. There's a p- couple there, a husband and wife. There's a little kid. It's his turn at bat. The, the kid's uh, – the dad's like, you can do this. And the wife's like, this, you can't do this. Yeah, he's, that was amazing. He's really bad at baseball. And I was like, oh, she's right. You can tell by the way he's walking to the bat, like just dragging the bat behind him real dejected. I was like, oh, he's not going to be good at baseball for yeah, sure. Yeah, it's one of those moments I was watching it where I'm just like – like I don't have kids or anything, but I'm just like, oh, right. Parents are like – Humans, yeah, and they're yeah, like, yeah, yeah. "Oh no, this is gonna fucking suck." Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she's like, "This is gonna be so shitty for him." She and then leaves. She's like, she leaves. She's like, "Oh, I'm, I have to set up snacks. I'm just gonna. I gotta go. I can't watch this. You can't watch <laughs> yeah, your yeah, yeah. son. <laughs> your son suck at basketball. At baseball." Um, so she gets up and leaves, and then he looks over, and there's an old guy next to him, and he's like, uh, "That moment was cool. The reveal of the old man was pretty cool. Was super cool. I thought." And he, the, the old guy says, "Like, uh, you know, it's like I taught you." 
Uh, he always oh, says like, "Oh, he's way ahead of the ball." And it's like, oh, "It's like I taught you." And his dad says like, "Yep, yeah, eyes, uh, keep an eye on the pitcher, put your elbow back, whatever." Baseball bullshit. And uh, he's like, "All right, so you know what you have to." do? The old guy says, "You know what you have to do." And the dad walks over, picks up a baseball bat, walks over to the the, the concession stand, and beats his wife to death with, with a baseball the, bat. Yeah, and it is fucked up. Yeah, like it is dark. And at, when he hits her. The kid actually gets a hit at the. He's been like yeah, yeah. striking and hitting fouls, and when the first time he hits her, the kid gets a hit at the at bat and gets like runs or like gets a home run or whatever. And at first, I thought, is this something where the kid can be good at baseball, but only if the father kills people? <laughs> and that's what this episode is going to be like—a dad killing people so his kid can get hits at fucking. Oh, that'd be funny. At, at Little League. Well, I thought it was going to be like a, he was a like a suburban serial killer. Like I, th- I thought he, w- I thought the dad was going to be the main focus of the episode or right. something. And that kind of stuff I've, I always think is interesting, where it's like, oh, it's like the suburbs, but there's something on. Oh, like yeah, I, I think yeah, I always yeah, think that's yeah, kind of yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's not Picket what it was. Fences, yeah. Kind of shit. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, not the case. He turns around, the old man's gone. It's just his hat where the old man was, and uh, the dad walks over covered in fucking blood. And Smiling. that's credits. And I was like, that is a good fucking opening to this TV show. Yeah. I am curious. I want to know what's going on. We get a we go to the press conference, uh, the, and this is where I was like, oh, "Why is the fucking FBI here?" It's not; it's just a different generic white yep. man who looks exactly like the FBI agent. Yeah. Uh, but he's a detective. And I feel like when you hit a certain age and you're white, you just look like an FBI detective. Like, <laughs> like, it's like as long a as you're bit, under as long, a certain weight, yeah, like, yeah, you just yeah, look yeah, like yeah, a guy. yeah, 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 yeah. If you're yeah. in a suit, I'm like, you're probably the feds. Um, <laughs> so there's a, they go to this press conference, and this is what I thought was funny. Uh, they've done it twice. This happens in the first episode and in this episode. So they like people. The reporters are like, "Oh, what you know? What about this? What about this?" And Perry's like, "Was there any fucking problems in the marriage?" And uh, he says, and uh, uh, Kolchak shows up just like on a staircase in the background. Yeah. He's just there, and he says, "Like, uh, what about the reports that he uh, said he saw his dead father before uh, going to commit the murder?" And the detective's like, where the hell did you hear that? So, like, Kolchak's got sources. Yeah. That happens in the first episode as well, that he knows about the girl being pregnant and all this stuff. We don't, how, it's his first, one, in the last episode is his first day, so how the fuck does he have sources already? And then two here, who are these, like, in the previous, in the old Kolchak, he's got the guy that works in the fucking uh, coroner's office. You slip him a little bit of money, yeah. he can go check out shit. You, like, meet these sources. And this, it's just like he just has them and we're supposed to just buy that. And I, I don't like that as much. It feels lazy. Yeah. Um, and what we find out is that, uh, you know, he's been reported, whatever. And I wrote down here, this is, so, I, they, uh, they go to see uh, the the guy. It turns out that guy is a uh, DA, right? He's a district attorney. Yeah. And uh, they go to see him in jail, and he's like, "Yeah, you know, I saw my he'd been sh- my dad had been coming to me, and it didn't feel weird. It was like it felt like in a dream. How it feels natural. Blah 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 blah." I wrote down immediately at this moment. This was like the ninth, like the ninth maybe note I've written. I'm calling it. Guy in prison is getting revenge on the people that put him away by making them kill. Also, we won't get a good explanation of how he is doing that. I wrote that down well, like 10 minutes into this episode. You're a wizard. Nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they don't – here's the thing I get. Like he's – our guy, Kolchak's our supernatural guy. You don't want to check any other possibilities before you get into demons. This guy <laughs> – you know what I mean? Like this guy saying you that he's see, being visited by his fucking dead father and his dead father didn't really tell him to kill somebody, but it was implied. Yeah. So he beat his wife to death. You don't want to like see if he's got a brain tumor, anything like that. That doesn't seem like maybe – Yeah, I would just assume he's schizophrenic or something. Something, right? No, he goes – he see, tells him this and he walks out and he's like – Sounds like spirit possession. That's his first fucking thought. It does not. Does it? I don't know that it does at all. I don't think it does in the slightest. <laughs> it sounds like a guy who's mentally ill and he's able to hide it from people. Yeah, I didn't even know what that meant because he just says that like we're supposed to know what spirit possession sounds like. And I was like, does it? I don't, I guess. Uh, <laughs> turns out, also, this is, so this is another episode where it's a, uh, if, where Perry says to him like, this is a, this is another thing. Like you're you're making this about you because your wife was murdered. Yeah, and it's like is every episode going to be involved with just somebody murdering a wife? And then this <laughs> yeah, that's all. It's murder. always Kolchak's thing. <laughs> is there's he only investigates wife murder. 
Um, uh, basically, what we find out is that there is a. They make such weird choices on this show. Uh, we find out that the DA was involved. We find this out because. Uh, so we find out that the DA was involved in prosecuting this guy named Damon Kaler or Kraler, who was like a kind of low key Charles Manson. Yeah. He was like, a, like trying to be a Charles Manson. He had all these followers. Um, they only killed one person before. That's what I mean by weird choices. Make this guy like the head of the deadliest cult in the world, right? Why not make him dangerous? Yeah, he's a low rent fucking. Uh... But what he what he what he is is a manipulator. And the reason I know he's a manipulator is they call him a manipulator ninety five times in this episode. They must say the word manipulator or manipulation like. For the there's a ten minute stream where every character says it three times. Yeah, they really don't respect their viewing audience. <laughs> yeah, I get it. He manipulates people. They, he, I, every character walks in and go and says something like, "You know about Kramer? He's a manipulator." Everyone fucking does it to the next person. What we find out is we find out that he was the he was the DA on that case because Kolchak's going through his appointment book and one of them says ACDC and uh, Gabriel Union. I wrote it down. Says. Um, so is that the band, the electricity, or the sexual preference? Yeah. I don't know, man. <laughs> like, no one calls it ACDC anymore. Like, I, mean, I don't, know I don't why... think anybody did in 2005. That's what I'm saying. Like, that, what, was like... that was like the 70s. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, he's a real groovy cat. <laughs> the fuck's wrong with you? <laughs> that annoyed the shit out of me. But ACDC stands for like a pellet court Damon Carayler or whatever. Yeah. Which... No, it doesn't. No one's abbreviating that like that. It doesn't matter. Who does that? Nobody. Um, David Crayler's in jail. We see him saying over and over, you know what you have to do. You know what you have to do. He's like rocking back and forth. Uh, They go to visit him and we find out that (laughs) this is another weird choice. Um, so his whole thing as the cult leader was he hated moral hypocrites. Yeah. So they is the one person his team his his cult killed. They cut the head off an oil executive because yeah. he was like I don't whatever I don't know what why he's a moral hypocrite but whatever. Right, right. Then he gets Crayler gets arrested for strangling his wife because the uh, people because what we find out is Gabriel Union convinced the wife to testify against them. Yeah. Why a reporter is doing that I don't know but whatever. Yeah. These guys are so involved with police work like it's kind of I'd be so annoyed. <laughs> I was like a, a cop, and I'm like, you guys gotta have to stop doing this. You have to stop showing up at every crime scene. People are getting killed because of you. Yeah, Just yeah, fucking yeah, back yeah. off. Uh, yeah, her, his wife is murdered because of her yeah. story, 100%. So, this is another weird choice they make for this show. Crayler, apparently, real dickhead. She walks into jail and just starts telling all the other fucking prisoners, ah, you bunch of worthless assholes. Yeah. Apparently he walks into jail and just starts going, ah, look at this piece of shit. Yeah. Just roast mode and everybody. It, to the point that he has to get put in solitary confinement because he won't stop roasting people. <laughs> yeah. and it's like, what is this? Fucking hilarious. It's so to strange. The, point, the warden says, like, you know, have to, you know, every gang in this prison has a kill order out on him. He was in the, he was in the kitchen and somebody threw fucking hot oil in his eyes and blinded him for life because... He's just that much of a dick. He's just owning people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like, all right, well, here's some hot oil. It's like, yeah, oh, Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. He just walks into jail. He's like, nice pants. We're all wearing the same pants, Damon. <laughs> Fuck you. He's just being rude. Words hurt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we get a bunch of really poorly done wannabe Hannibal Lecter conversations yeah. between Kolchak and this guy where he's supposed to be he's supposed to be threatening but he's kind of cross-eyed which yeah. is not a threatening look on anyone not even a little bit you, no you look really real goofy yep <laughs> yep he's even he's got like shitty makeup scars around his face but he is also cross-eyed and I every time he tried to be tough I left They're, he's blind and cross-eyed it's like <laughs> what what pick one <laughs> uh, we see a woman and she's in her apartment Apartment, and there's like a little kid running around. Her husband's playing. The t- she's making dinner. She's cutting peppers, uh, very aggressively cutting peppers. And her husband's watching a baseball game, and uh, he won't turn down the volume on the baseball game. She keeps asking him. So everybody on the show is just a fucking dickhead. Turn the baseball, yeah. turn the volume down, just dickhead. Down. He's just yeah, making you it's fucking loud. Like I'm, it's annoying me, and I'm not in that apartment. Um, it's baseball. You yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think it's basketball, but whatever oh, it is, okay. doesn't even matter. Doesn't matter. Turn it the fuck down. Yeah. Um, 
then a little girl pokes her head around the kitchen counter. She's like, Mommy, look at what I made. Look at what I made. And she's like, all right, in a minute. She goes, no, Mommy, look at what I made. And she goes around the corner, and the kid has disappeared. But now there's magnets on the side of the counter that say, you know what you have to do. Yeah. And then she, like, grabs a knife, goes into, like, zombie mode. And next thing we know, she's killed her husband. Turns out she is the judge on Crayler's trial. So now he's got the DA and the judge. Also, the DA has hung himself in jail because he's killed his wife and he can't handle it. Yeah. All that's fine. What I liked about that scene is that um, I feel like it's – I didn't – I wasn't – there was only one part. It hasn't happened yet in the show where I was like beyond the opening where I'm like, oh, this is kind of tense. Like, yeah. oh, what's going to happen? But like this episode – so like I, what I liked about that scene is that they do kind of ratchet up mm. stuff where, where – uh, attention – or I mean I didn't feel it. But it, like they kind of did a good job with that scene where like – they did everything right except actually cause tension. Yeah. It's kind of weird because it's like she's cutting very intensely. She gets very close to her fingers. Yeah, so you're like, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then turn the volume down. Turn the volume down. Oh, I'm cutting. Turn the volume down. This kid keeps bothering me. Turn the volume down. I have a knife. And so you're like, Where, oh, this is going to be kind of interesting. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So I, I did like that scene. I yeah, no, I thought cool. it was effective yeah. for sure. Um, and so like I said previously, that's clearly what's happening. Damon Crayler is – Somehow managed. They keep saying how he manipulates people, and he, and Kolchak uh, is saying no, he's taking over. He's like mind controlling them, yeah. and he's like no, he was just took weak people and manipulating them. So maybe it's his followers that are still on the outside that are are doing something. Like that's the everyone's suggestion for like because this is very much X Files, right? So he's got the crazy idea. Uh, she being uh, Perry, being Gabriel Union, who is also Scully, has like the no, it's got to be based in science or reality, and either one of them's right or there's some mix of the two, right? That's X Files. Yeah. So in this one, his suggestion as the as the uh, Fox Mulder character is he is using his mind to spirit possess these people and make them kill. That is the outlandish supernatural suggestion. The other suggestion that's supposed to be the reality based one is. No, it mu- he's locked away in a prison cell. He has no access to these people. It must be his followers on the outside who are also mind controlling someone and making them kill. Like, how is yeah. that more just because they are out of prison doesn't make that a more believable <laughs> like theory. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, it's a good point. Because um, we know the one thing we know for sure is that these people, the the DA and the judge are the ones who physically did the murdering. Right. It's not like they're claiming they don't. They don't remember. Maybe they did. Maybe they didn't. No, we know for sure they did. We watched them do it. So, like, how can the other – how can his followers be involved? It just doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Um, we set up in the beginning, the first time they go to see Crayler in jail, it is Kolchak and Gabriel Union. She gets to the door and she's like, I thought I could do it, but I can't. I can't see him. Mm-hmm. And uh, they're like, what do you mean? Like, why not? It's like, I saw I was sat in that trial every day for six months or whatever. And he's like, okay, what? And she's like, you have to do this without me. And she leaves. Did they ever explain why she was so freaked out? Um, I mean, I assume it's because she it was kind of her fault that he killed his wife, maybe? I guess. They don't really ever say that. And more to the point, Gabriel Union, up until this point, is made out to be sort of like a... It's like a hard ass. Kind of hard ass, yeah. tough. Why do this to her character in the second, the second episode? episode. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Put this eight episodes in where she's been a badass and she's whatever, whatever. So that when you have this moment where she's a, like a finally afraid of something. Oh, this guy must be you really go, Oh, scary. this guy must yeah. be a fucking thing, right? This means something. You do it in the second episode. It's like, oh, she's just a pussy. I was wrong. I was wrong the whole time. <laughs> yeah. He's just kind of a wuss, I guess. Like, yeah. They go to the cop. So this is another. Uh, turns out the little girl who said, Mommy, look at me, look at me, died in a, a drunk driving accident like two years ago. Or yeah. So it's another woman, another person who has seen a dead loved one before committing this murder. They confront the detective about that. Now, here's what's annoying. The detective, first off, in the, in the classic dumb fucking shit writing thing ever, he said, uh, Kolchak goes to the detective and is like, what about uh, reports that she also saw a, a dead loved one before the murder? And he said, the detective says like, well, how did you, like, she only told me and my partner that. How did you possibly know? And he's like, I didn't know till just now. Ugh. And it's like, oh, that is the least, that's some encyclopedia Brown level fucking detective work. Yeah. Um, and it's the thing, it's the thing where like, if you ever did that in real life, it would never work. No. Like, if it was like, oh, I didn't do like, th- No one's ever done that. Like, <laughs> yeah, 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 you yeah. would be like a mind reader. I mean, like, I, I would never have the balls to do that. <laughs> also, let's say I'm keeping a secret 
and I'm talking to fucking Kolchak, who I know is trying to get secrets out of me. If he came to me and be like, what about reports of uh, her also seeing a dead body? I'd be like, I have no idea what you're talking about. That would be it. That cop would never be like, whoa, what? How did you know? Yeah, you're like, a cop. You're supposed to yeah. play this shit close to the vest. Not at all. Um, <laughs> not even a little? Not even a little bit. What is great, but that does, that scene is important for one reason, and it, it's a little bit important. They, it, it, he refers to his partner again. Uh, late, a little bit later, we hear they're talking or whatever, and Kolchak says something about Granoff, that's the detective's partner. And Perry says, what are you talking about? His partner died like six months ago. He never got a, a new partner. And I was like, oh, shit, the partner's yeah. dead this whole time. I was like, that's a fun reveal. I, I, they, I fell for it hook, line, and sinker. They didn't overplay that hand, I didn't think. So when they finally had the reveal, I was like, oh, that's good. Yeah, Works I thought that me. part was cool. And then when, when he uh, is walking to the apartment, uh, 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 then I thought that part I thought that was yeah, pretty yeah, intense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically the partner, he say, the partner says like, hey, you know what you have to do? And he goes to kill his wife. The detective goes to kill his wife. Yeah, I thought and that it turns out that he was cool. a detective on the fucking guy in jail's case or whatever. Uh, I thought that was like done well. Yeah, he pulls up in the house. They're trying to race there to get there in time, whatever. Uh, she's working out on a on a treadmill, so she's got headphones on. She doesn't hear him like approaching, and they tackle him at the last second before he's able to shoot her. But like I was like, yeah, that is an effective. All of that I thought worked super. Yeah, well. very effective. Yeah, yeah. Um, they realize like. Uh, the guy they go he goes to see Crayler again. Crayler tells like, "Look, you have to print my manifesto. Um, if you don't, I'm going to keep killing." Essentially, he's yeah. being vague about it, but not vague enough that it's cool. He's pretty on the nose. Um, so he convinces fucking he like, "You have to bring Gabriel Union here. You have to print my thing, or I'm going to keep killing." So she shows up. It's a little moment where he grabs their hand. He grabs her hand. She's like, "Ah, I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you." Whatever. When they leave, they realize that manifesto we gave him is a blank notebook. There's nothing in there. And they're like, yeah. "Oh shit." He just needed you there so that he could be in the same room with you so that he could possess you. Uh, you're going to be the next one to kill somebody. He's mad at you because you, he knows you are the one to flip his wife or whatever. Yeah. So so Jane steals her letter opener because mm-hmm. that's going to say, like, she doesn't have access to anything else sharp, apparently, <laughs> in her life. Um, and then <laughs> and then the fucking our boy Kolchak tells her, like, what about drugs? And she's like, I'm not taking drugs. Like, Shut up. Why? Right, yeah. That sounds awesome. Okay. Um, but more to the point, he's like, I just mean like some sleeping pills. If you're asleep, you're not a threat to yourself or anybody else. And I'm like, you don't know that. Yeah, what are you talking this about? This is supernatural mind control. You have no idea that Salmonex <laughs> is going to be a preventative for that. Like, yeah. Ah, that annoy- like this, they, his confidence with which he knows that to be a solution really bugged me. Yeah. Well, they kind of did that in the original series where he would be like, he would just be like, uh, oh, well, here's how you... But at least in the original series, he would do that by, like, researching. He'd go to a yeah. library, yeah. read a book, and be like, oh, it says here you got to put a fucking stone under a boot or whatever, like some bullshit <laughs> Indian whatever. Yeah, uh, I At least th- something. This is some shit he just thinks of himself. Yeah. Like One thing that I that I was thinking when I was watching this, and he was like, yeah, my manifesto, blah, blah. Yeah. I would just, this has nothing to do with like the episode, but I would, like, I've never read a manifesto and been like convinced. No. I'm always just like, oh, you're no, insane. No, no, no. You're clearly... Co- well, here's the thing. No one's saying writes manifestos. That is the... That is People the, just live their life. Medium of the crazy. Person. Yeah. Like, even manifest. All right, this is going to be a wild hot take. Okay. Um, I believe his name was Christopher Dorn. He was that LA cop. He was a black guy, he killed a bunch of cops, went crazy. Oh, I don't know. Oh, this, this was a few years ago. Uh, he was like a black LA cop, and he was like, basically was saying, oh, the fucking police force is a racist. I'm being abused and bullied or whatever. Yeah. I think he kills a couple cops, goes on the run. He's hiding in like a cabin in the woods. They Sweet. eventually fucking. Torch the cabin and kill him inside the cabin or whatever. But he released a manifesto, and I remember like going through it on the internet. Didn't read the whole thing, but I remember going through it a little bit on the internet and being like, "Some of this is making a little bit of sense." Uh, and then, <laughs> and then it gets to like he just starts talking about like comics he likes. <laughs> He's just like what? Louis C.K. Man, awesome, love this guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's crazy. It's fucking wild. There's a large section about. Let me look it up. His name's Christopher Dorn. I, I, Dorn, I believe. Never I'm bringing heard of it this up. Guy. I'm bringing it up right now. Um, that is so Dorner. Dorner, Dorner. was his okay. Name. He looked no, like I've a never... fat LL Cool J. Oh sweet uh, <laughs> man, I remember a couple years ago, some guy broke into LL Cool J's house and like didn't know it was his house, and like he just like, oh, it's like a nice house. I'm going to steal stuff, and like LL Cool J was home, and he's like 
a big dude, so he just beat the shit out of the guy. <laughs> and like, it'd be so, I'd be so mad if I like broke into someone's house and they showed up to kick my ass. I'm like, oh, I was gonna beat my ass. Then right as he's about to throw the first punch, I'm like, this is LL Cool J. Like, if, like this is so surreal. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where's your Kangol hat? Like, what, 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 what's happening? Also, can I steal one of these hats? <laughs> Yeah, no, Christopher Dorner goes on. He's like, this is. <laughs> uh, he writes that Charlie Sheen is effing awesome. He singles out Ellen DeGeneres for her excellent contribution to entertaining America and bringing the human factor to entertainment. Uh, oh. Christopher Waltz's Oscar nominated performance in Django Unchained, which he says showed glimpses of Daniel Day Lewis and Morgan Freeman esque type qualities of greatness. Okay. Uh, um, I'm wrong about that. Sure. Uh, proves those of you a comedy fan, citing Larry David, Jerry Seinfeld, Chris Rock, Louis C.K., Dave Chappelle, Lisa Lampanelli, Wanda Sykes, and Jeff Ross as pure genius. Okay. Very group of people. And then uh, Bill Cosby gets his own paragraph at the end of the manifesto in which Dorner implores the comedian not to mute your unvarnished truthful speech or moral compass. (laughs) (laughs) Whoops. Uh, (laughs) Uh, That makes me laugh. Uh, Anyway, I forgot what show we were talking about. So um, she goes home and somehow – I'm not sure how they figure out. But basically, like, they, she goes back to her place. Colchak goes back to his place. There's a short – he's, like, looking in a mirror. He turns around. His dead wife is there. Yeah. And you're like, oh, he's being controlled, not Gabriel Union, which is how we figure the audience figures it out because we see the dead wife. I'm not sure how they figure it out, but Jane is like, I tried to call – Kolchak and he's not picking up his phone, so yeah. he must be about to murder Gabriel Union, I guess. Uh, um, so he he runs. He, uh, he says something like, "Don't you understand? He spent more time with uh, Crayler than anybody because yeah. he went to visit him like a bunch of times." Um, what does that matter? I don't know. Apparently, you have to be in the room with him. Then also, there's a moment that I don't understand where he's con- somehow they've managed to convince the warden to send Crayler to, and I quote, "Where is it?" A deep isolation facility in northern Michigan. Yeah. What is a deep isolation facility? I don't that know. That sounds like where they sent Wolverine in those X-Men movies. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? Yeah, they're out to lace his bones with adamantium. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, that's not a thing. There's so much of that in this show, of just things that don't exist, like that chemical spray, whatever the fuck this is. And then they take them... To just a place where there's like a shit ton of people. It doesn't make any sense. Well, no. I think what actually ends up happening, and I'm not 100% sure because it wasn't explained well, but uh, they're going to be transferring her him at like midnight or whatever, right? Oh, okay. And then they call the jail and the detective is showing up. The detective who uh, he had tried to get to murder his wife, right? Uh, shows up at the jail, answers the phone. He's like, don't worry about it. We've convinced the warden to transfer him a little early. And what they do is transfer him into Gen oh, Pop. Okay. The cop got him. The cop knows if we put him yeah, in Gen Pop, yeah. they're going to kill him. Yeah. He wants him dead because he almost killed his wife over him. So he convinces the warden to put him into Gen Pop. Also, like, did he not get in trouble for like almost murdering his wife? No, yeah. not at all. Doesn't come up. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not not an issue. He's in. A, he goes to a hospital to give him some uh, some like Valium or something because yeah. he was freaked out. But other than that, no. His wife's very forgiving. Yeah, very hey, hey, I mean, hey, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, buy hey, her buy another the... ring, dude, because that is the most <laughs> forgiving human it. being on the planet. Uh, um, so we're getting intercut of Kolchak try uh, like slowly approaching. Somehow he gets into her apartment. I yeah, don't that didn't know. make a lot of sense. He has a key, I guess. Um, He's like slowly approaching her bed with a knife. He's clearly there to kill Gabriel Union. Jane is pounding on the door, let me in, let me in, or whatever. And we're cutting back to them moving the prisoner. And you see him like being moved through this jet, like hallway. And we're like, oh, they're moving him to this like, deep isolation facility. No, they put him in Gen Pop, where he is immediately murdered by a Benetton ad of gang members. Did you see how <laughs> so many. the multi diverse. Like, because they say every gang has a death order on <laughs> yeah, them they early. Team up. They all, like, a Mexican guy cuts him in the neck, and then there's, like, a white biker, a black guy, yeah. two Asian dudes. They all just stab him a whole bunch of times. And that, when they, once he's dead, uh, Kolchak snaps out of it. Now, here's what's interesting about this episode to me. Our heroes did nothing. They got, they, got, they all got owned the whole time. The whole episode, they accomplished nothing. The only reason she's not dead and he's not a murderer in prison is because this other cop 
is a murderer. Yeah. Just like, set this guy up. Yeah, just 100% illegally mm-hmm. had this man murdered. Yeah, and it's a thing where we talked about it earlier, like where if this was a, like, episode eight, I think it'd be kind of a f- more effective because it's like, yeah, like you said, it's like, oh, we're setting up this woman to be a hard ass. We're setting up Kolchak as a guy who knows all the answers. Right, right. But no, they get totally owned. <laughs> Two episodes, like, second, second, episode. second episode. I have not, we haven't built up any equity in these characters for me to believe if this is episode eight or nine, then we are dealing with the worst villain they have come across yet. The first one to ever get the upper hand on Kolchek and his gang or yeah. whatever, right? No, it's the second episode. Nope. It turns out Kolchek's just a fucking idiot. Yep. And so is everybody on this team. He's been at work for three days. Yeah. <laughs> like, all right. Well, that sucks. Uh, 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 that being said. I enjoyed my two hours watching this fucking dumb show. Yeah, it was fine. It's fine. Yeah, it's perfectly yeah, fine. fine. Like, I was like, if this was, not, if I was, apparently this, they only aired six episodes initially, and then they aired all ten on Sci-Fi Channel. Oh, okay. Um, if I was, like, homesick or in a hotel somewhere, and it was a marathon on this on yeah, Sci-Fi, yeah, yeah. absolutely watch yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just leaving it on. Yeah, I'd give it, how many D-mans do I give this? I give it, I give the first one two D-mans okay. because... They were establishing, I think they did an okay job establishing the world, mm. and it seemed like everyone memorized their lines. So I'll give it a two, two Dean Man out of five. Five, okay. and then I'm what the Dean Man top is. Oh, yeah. It always changes. <laughs> and then the second episode, I don't know, two and a half, two and a half Dean Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was perfectly fine. fine. I don't like our lead character. Gabrielle no. Union is good. Like, she's good at what they have her doing, sassy, whatever. Yeah, and it's like. I don't like how e- easily she trusts the cops. In the first yeah, episode, yeah, they, yeah, like. Yeah. He says, like, oh, we know we, the uh, animal control already cremated that coyote or whatever. And uh, Jane and Kolchak are like, what the hell, man? And she's like, well, why would they lie? Yeah. You're a reporter, A, yeah. and B, black. Why are you trusting these goddamn cops doing? so quickly? Yeah. Well, the yeah, FBI yeah. wouldn't lie to me. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That is right. me. Uh, no, I'm down. I'm going to enjoy it. Like, I'll watch this and be perfectly entertained. Oh, I'm yeah. curious to see if they even get back to the mark on his wrist or if this is one of the things yeah, where they just kind of let that up, go. Yeah. yeah, there's no like deeper mythology in this episode. No. Um, so we'll see what happens. Anything you want to plug? Uh, but, 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 let me think. Uh, I have a po- I have two podcasts, believe it or not. Several podcasts. I have way too. I have two too many. <laughs> uh, yeah, I have one uh, called I Learn Nothing with my friend Ben, where we learn about philosophy. He teaches me a philosophy, and I just try my best to make him angry. Uh, and then I have one called the Landlax Corporation with uh, my friend Aaron, and we the, we get stoned and ask people hypothetical questions, and it's very dumb. They're both dumb. Um, Lanox Corporation is the weirdest thing I've yeah. ever participated in. Yeah, you've been but on a it bunch. Yeah. Super fun. It's super so you fun. Definitely check it out. I'm also my car's in the shop, so I'm driving a truck. Look how big this That's fucking big fob is huge. It's huge. Why is okay? There's no I reason. Have a question. There's no why reason. Why is that big? I get the truck is big, but why does the key thing have to be? big? I don't know. Too? They also gave me two of them. I feel like one's for the front, <laughs> one's for the back, or something. Dude, I that is am, such a dumb truck ass thing to do. I'm terrified. I got big keys. I, I'm so terrified driving this truck. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I, like, this guy hit my car, so mm. I brought it into the shop, and they're like, well, we can, uh, you know, the his insurance is covering, so you can rent whatever you want or whatever. And so they're like, all right, well, so we have a couple of cars to choose from. Uh, the first one, Dodge Ram truck, and I was like, that's hilarious. That's what I'm getting. <laughs> and that, as soon as <laughs> The he, first time you got into it, you're like, oh, no, this is too I, big. I'm glad. I was like, I should not have done this. <laughs> like, this isn't funny at all. Yeah, I thought yeah, I was going to have yeah, yeah. fun, and it's- Oh, I have to drive up a gas in this giant-ass truck. It's horrifying. <laughs> so this is going to be an interesting drive home. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah. Uh, okay. We've got the sting coming up first Wednesday of the month. We will be taking next week off from the podcast. I'm out of town. Where so you we'll going? get back. I'll be in Maine. Are you doing uh, uh, gigs? No. Just going up for a little vacation. Oh, hell And yeah. uh, to see where my girlfriend spent a bunch of summers. Where she, this is not sad. Her grandmother passed a while ago. It's whatever. Sure. Her grandmother passed. We're having a memorial service. But okay. she, her grandmother was like 95. Like, uh, you know, too bad she died, but she had a good run. She was fucking... Yeah. yeah it, it happens to grandmas, man. Like, that's the... I think my, gran- I think my grandmother was 89 when she died, mm. and my grandfather was like 95. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, like, come on. What do you, uh, what they do you did want? It. Yeah, 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 they yeah, literally yeah. achieved the American dream. Yeah, it's fine. Sure. Like, like, we're going to her <laughs> summer home on the coast of Maine. Like... <laughs> She she did it good. <laughs> it's nice. 
Uh, um, so we're going to do that. So yeah, so we'll be back not this coming week, but the week after for more Cold Check. Uh, yes. If you like the show, rate, review, subscribe. Tell your friends. Follow us on social media to recommend shows to do after this. I want to do a good one. We've done too many shitty ones in a row. I need a real like quality show that only lasts in one season. So please tweet at me recommendations on that that we haven't already done. Uh, you probably done freaks and geeks. We right? did freaks yeah. and geeks. We hit all the we we hit a lot of the big ones early. So yeah. now we're like, uh, what do we do? Um, <laughs> so yeah, rate, review, subscribe, <laughs> tell your friends, and we will see you in a couple weeks. Bye.